Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. In this video, I will go over the process I use to select my crossover settings for each of my speakers in my home theater. For those that don't know, I am running a 5.6.4 system. That's five main speakers for the left, center, right, and both surrounds. And in my case, all five of these main speakers are the same speaker, which is the Home Theater Direct Versa HTS-1. The dot six is for my subwoofer setup, which consists of four Stereo Integrity 18-inch subwoofers and two SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofers. And finally, the dot four is for the four Atmos speakers that are overhead, which are the Home Theater Direct HDX R65 AIM in-ceiling speakers. At this point, if you've watched my previous videos on Room EQ Wizard or REW, I have all six of my subwoofers time aligned, EQ'd with a house curve, then I ran my room correction on my Denon AVR, which is Odyssey. After Odyssey ran, I verified all my speakers were at the same decibel level at my main listening position using the UMic 1 and our Room EQ Wizard's SPL meter. I did end up making a few changes in the Denon AVR speaker settings to some of the main speakers in order to get them all to 75 decibels at the main listening position. The Atmos speakers needed the most volume boost as they were 1 to 2 decibels under 75 after Odyssey's adjustments. So now that our speakers and subwoofers are all dialed in the way we want them, we can figure out where our crossover settings should be. Yes, Room Correction already set the crossovers when it ran, but that doesn't always mean it's the best setting for your speakers. You've probably read or saw somewhere that you need to set your crossovers at 80 Hz, but is that really the best for your speakers and your room? I was pretty shocked with my results in the end. Using the same measurement tools we've already used, primarily the UMic 1 at the main listening position, we can use a feature in Room EQ Wizard called the Alignment Tool to help us set the best crossover point for each speaker in our system. This will allow us to get the best response possible and visually see the differences that the various crossover settings give us. It will all make sense shortly as we walk through this process, so let's get started. Okay, we're back at my desktop here. At this point, I've already gone through this whole process. I do not have my UMic 1 hooked up. So hopefully this will still work. Naturally, you need to take a bunch of measurements, so we need the Room EQ Wizard opened up. I'm going to go to Preferences here. We're going to get to ASIO later on in this video, but right now we're going to work on our mains and our subwoofers, kind of like our initial subwoofer measurements. We used Java, and uh, you know our output device is going to be receiver or AVR that shows up in here if it's hooked up and your input device should be your UMic 1. Again, making sure that everything is set up like we did before. Calibration files, preferences should be good there. So what you'll do is you'll go to measure. What we're going to do is take a bunch of measurements at all of our crossover settings. My Denon AVR has crossover settings that go from 60 to 80 to 90 to 100, 110, and 120. And what we're gonna do is measure just the subwoofers at each of those crossover settings, and then we're gonna measure just the mains also at each of those crossover settings. And then you'll see how we can put those two measurements together in the alignment tool and see how that calculates out to be what the best crossover is going to end up. It doesn't matter if you record just the mains or the subs first. So if we start with the subwoofers, you can change the output to left and right since we're doing both of our mains at the same time here. And if you're doing just the subs, what you're going to need to do is unhook your mains, the left and right channels from the back of your receiver. So with your receiver off, unplug or disconnect your left and right main speakers from the back of the receiver. And then when you run these measurements, you will only hear subwoofer output as the measurement. Then what you can do is start at the beginning. It doesn't matter which one you do. So subs 60. So what I'm gonna do is go into my Denon AVR and set my crossover for my main speakers to 60 and then I will go down here and do a measurement. Then when this is done, I will go back into my Denon AVR, change my crossover to 80. 
and open up my measurement tool here, change it to 80, run another measurement, come back, do the next one at 90, until we have every single one done. When we have all of our subs measured at all of the crossover settings, turn your receiver off, reconnect your main speakers, and then what you can do, in my case, you need to turn off the subwoofers because now we want to run all those same measurements for just the main speakers. And the way we can do that in the mini DSP is just go in and mute all the subwoofers. If you don't have a mini DSP, you can unplug them, power them off, whatever you need to do to not have any subwoofer output when you're just measuring your mains. So for me, that was as simple as uh, muting my mini DSP and then going up and then again make sure that your crossover setting matches which measurement you're doing so if we were starting from the bottom mains 60 take the measurement come back in go into your avr change the crossover setting to the next one which is 80 take another measurement so on and so forth till you're all the way up to 120 and you have everything from 60 to 120 for both your subs by themselves and both of your mains by themselves so you'll see here i can just go to open main crossovers. So this is exactly what I was just talking about. I have them all here. We'll clear them out. This was my left and right mains at 60. Then I changed the crossover setting to 80, got another measurement, 90, got another measurement, 100, 110, and 120. So you can see that there is a difference as the crossover changes in the output in how the mains drop off. So if I clear those out, subs at 60, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Mains at 60, subs at 60. So there's 60 right there. Mains at 80, subs at 80. It moved up and tried to cross at 80. So you get the point. We have all of our measurements and we're ready to go into the time alignment tool. To find RumiQ Wizard's alignment tool, what we're gonna do is go over here to the right and we're gonna click on our controls. Here we go, alignment tool. When I click on that, should open this box up. You can click on the controls button again to get rid of that menu and see the full chart here. So you kind of have a top chart and a lower one. And if you don't see a different lower one that looks similar to this, make sure in this movable box that show face traces is selected. You can see if that's not checked, you just have one graph. You want to make sure that's checked so you have a top and a bottom. So what I'm going to do, because I see all of our measurements here for our mains and subs, I'm going to right click down here and just do clear selections. So now our selections are right here in these drop down boxes. So we're going to start at the bottom at our crossover of 60. And so our measurement of our subs at 60 and our mains are 60 are in this particular box. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the graph here, and on the top one, you can see as I move my cursor to the left and to the right, there's a blue number, right now it's 58.3, and I'm gonna get that as close as I can to 60. There we go, right on the money. Um, doesn't matter what this left side is, this is your SPL right now, it's 82.4. It's just gonna look for your, your crossover hertz settings. So 60 hertz, because we measured our subs at 60, and our mains at 60. The next step is to click on this button right here that says align phase slopes at cursor. Hence why we selected 60 for our crossover, for our subs, and our mains. You might get a lot of movement down here in this bottom box. You might only get a little bit of movement. You might get no movement at all. But notice right here, our delay is at zero. So we're all set to hit the button. So I'm gonna push the button here we had a little bit of movement down in this box, and now we have a delay. So we have our delay of 4.56, and it's telling us that the mains need to be delayed. However, we can't delay our mains from our subsystem. Normally, you'll get a negative number here, and you'll see that when we get to our other crossover settings that this will become a negative delay. So what we can do in turn is take the negative number and turn it into a positive delay for the subsystem. So that's how we're gonna apply the time alignment tool, what it figures out for the delay. When we get negative numbers, we'll turn it into a positive number and we'll delay our subs from our mains to accomplish our alignment. So hopefully that made sense. If not, go back and listen to it again. It's kind of confusing. So since we don't have a negative number here and I just clicked on something and changed it let's move on 
we're not going to use 60 as a crossover point. So you'll see here, I've already done this. So here's, here's what we're going to come up with. So we're going to go to 80. That's our next point. So starting subs, 80, mains, 80. And then before we hit our aligned phase slopes at cursor, we got to change our cursor because it's still on 60 right here. So we'll move it up here until we get to 80. So right there, 80 as our set point, aligned phase slopes at cursor. We'll see what it does down in this box. Not much, I saw a little bit right up here. And you'll notice that we have a very small delay of negative 0.18. So what we're gonna do with that number, you saw this just previously here, we take the negative delay on the mains and we're turning it into a positive delay for our subs. Go through the rest of your crossover settings. We can do one more, 90 and 90. Move your cursor to 90. Align face slopes negative 0.22 jump over here turn it into a positive so again i've already gone through all that so hopefully that makes sense after you've recorded the time delays by going through that process mark it all down on a notepad then you can go over to your mini dsp and i'm going to connect to mine so now that I'm connected, we're actively making changes to the mini DSP. Now I've already got mine all set, so these numbers are gonna be different, but what you're gonna do with those, those delays is you're gonna go to the outputs. So here's those delays across the bottom. This is where you enter your delay for your subsystem. And mine are all set because I've already done this. Now keep in mind, you've already made some delays when you're going through your subsystem and doing your time alignment for your subs, if you have multiple subs, you're already going to have some delays possibly in these numbers. So you want to record your starting delays in case you have to revert back to them or if you forget what they were because you're going to add these numbers to your starting delays in order to get your final delay. If we were to start at 80, calculator and make sure I'm adding properly. If we had 0.75 on our left rear sub and we added our 0.18, the delay on our left rear sub right down here would become 0.93. And then my right rear sub had the same starting delay, so that would also be 0.93. Our right front sub only had a 2.5 delay. Take your 2.5 plus your 0.18, that would become 0.43. And then I had no delay on my left front subsystem, so that would just simply become the 0.18. After you've entered your delays for the correct crossover that you're measuring into your mini DSP, across the board, across all outputs, depending upon how many subwoofers you have in your setup, then you're ready to go back to REW. We can exit out of the alignment tool because we're done with that. And then what you do is you take a measurement. You're going to, again, set your crossover to 80 in your receiver or your AVR when you're taking this measurement. So go back into your mains, into your speaker setting, change the crossover to 80, or if you're, you have a negative number and you're starting at 60, wherever you're starting, make sure that your delays of your crossover point match whatever you set in your AVR. So in mine, I started at 80. The Denon is set at 80. I took a measurement. That's what I got. Then you start the process all over again. Go back to your notepad. For 90, I have to add 0.22 of a delay to all of these numbers in my mini DSP. So I go back here, I add them up across all four channels since I'm using all four channels in my sub system. Once I've got all those calculated and entered across the board, go back to your Denon or your receiver and change your crossover. Make sure that it is set to the new setting, which would be 90, and go in and take a measurement at 90 so on and so forth so you get the point there so once you're done you've gone through now you should have all of the individual crossovers with your subs and your mains playing together to see what your final output looks like for your crossover setting and then you just go back and compare them so starting i didn't do 60 but here's my 80 so when i add in my 90 with the delays and the crossover set at 90 i got that response in orange I actually had a little bit of a better response, a little more output from the mains or from the subs together combined. I thought 90 was a little better than 80, so I'll get rid of 80. There's 90, we'll add in 100. Not much different, still have a little bit of a null here, and you wanna make sure that you don't select a crossover in a null, or maybe it's a, a peak. So to me, 100 being right here is kind of in this bad area of the graph. I don't think 100 would be a very wise choice in my situation. 
So let's move on to 110. Now the graph doesn't change a whole lot, but it does move my crossover point up to here, which is more in line. And then 120, right about there. If that makes sense, then you're just basically, you're just comparing all your crossovers. And you can see from 80 on up to 120. 120 had the most output, kind of dips down here a little bit. I liked the 120, that's what I chose for my left and right main speakers. And the reflection on how you can figure that out is my 120 crossover needed a 0.9 delay. So we'll take our 0.75 and we'll add the 0.9. So 1.65 is the delay, and if I get back to the Mini DSP, you'll see the 165 right here and the 165 right here, since these two had the same starting delays. So when you add the 0.9 to the 0.25, you get the 1.15 for my right front subs, and then the last channel didn't have any delay to begin with, so it's just simply 0.9. So that is how we use REW's alignment tool to get our mains delayed with our subsystem and figure out our best response to calculate our best crossover point. Okay, everybody, I had to do some changes because the next step is going to be going through the process for our center channel and our surrounds. So in order to do that, we need to get into that ASIO for all. Up to this point, we've used Java in our preferences right here for our driver, but we need to get to ASIO in order to send the sound to specific speakers in the rest of our surround sound system. So in order to accomplish that, I needed to run my computer through my receiver, my AVR. I have my output from my uh, computer going into my Denon and then from my Denon Instead of going out to the projector, it comes back over to my computer monitor. So that's why things look a little different with their aspect ratios currently. To get into ASIO for all, I'm going to actually start by closing REW. And at this point, um, we've added our delays to our subs so that they could be aligned with our mains. And we're done with the mini DSP. We've got everything entered in here. I highly suggest making a backup by going to File, Save, Save Current Configuration. Name it whatever you want to, save it wherever you want to save it, but get those settings saved. So if something happens to your mini DSP or you accidentally make changes and didn't realize it, all you got to do is do the opposite and go to load. You can load up your saved configurations to your mini DSP. But we're done with it, so I'm going to close it. We're done with our calculator. We'll reopen REW. And the rest of these are pretty easy. Going through the time alignment tool here in REW is the hardest for your left and right mains. You'll see here that doing your center channel and your surrounds are a lot easier. It goes a lot faster. There's a lot less measurements that have to take place. So the hard part's done. The rest of this should be fairly easy. So to start, we're going to go to our preferences. What I need to make sure is I have my sound output. You'll see here it's going to my Denon. Preferences, drivers, we're going to change it to the ASIO. We're going to choose a device and it's going to be this one. Now in our output you'll see that we have a whole bunch of different channels and that is how we send our output to individual speakers in our system. So I happen to find a nice graph that shows which speakers are what. So channel 1 is your front left, channel 2 front right, channel 3 is your center. Channel 4 goes to the subsystem, channel 5 surround left, channel 6 surround rear, and then it shows some height speakers. I don't know if they work. I didn't use them. I'm just doing my bed layer or my base layer of my mains at this point. So your input would be the U-Mic 1. I do not have that hooked up as I'm not actually taking measurements since I've already gone through this process. So you would need an input. More than likely, it's your U-Mic 1. Go to your Cal files. Make sure that your U-Mic 1 calibrations are in here. So I think our preferences, everything's good here. I'm going to close out of that. I initially had some issues getting ASIO to work. And I noticed that when it's running, I have a new little toolbox down here. And so when you click on it, you need to make sure that your display audio is on, powered. There, I just turned it off there it's on. So it is sending it out through the HDMI into the AVR. You know, I don't want the mini DSP on. I don't want USB ports on. I want it going through my HDMI cord so that it can be received by my Denon. The second part that I had issues with is this was all correct. My computer was set up right. 
the issue that I found out I had was I could only get, didn't matter which output channel I picked, they were only going to either my left or my right or my subsystem. I couldn't get anything to come out of my center channel. I couldn't get anything to come out of my surround channels. And the issue was in the AVR. So hopefully this will help somebody out because this took me a while to figure out. My AVR on this particular input, which is the auxiliary input on the front panel, which is just the closest to my computer and it was the easiest to hook my computer up to. When I ran into that input, my AVR was set to stereo. And so I only had a stereo signal being outputted to my speaker system. So it wasn't sending any of the specific information to the center channel or to the surrounds like I wanted it to, even though this was set to the right speaker. So make sure that your AVR is set to full surround mode when you're going through this process, and hopefully that'll save you guys some headache. So to get started, let's start with our center channel since we've already done our left and right mains. To start with our center, again using our little cheat sheet, we found that the center channel is output number three. So to take measurements with our center channel, we'll go to measure. Again, you'd have your U-mic one hooked up. I don't in this case. And we can start at the bottom again, go center. 60. And so what you're going to want to do is change your crossover inside of your receiver or AVR. Go to your center channel crossover. It should be a specific crossover separate from your mains. Change it to 60. Once that's set to 60, for our output, now that we're using ASIO for all, you'll notice we don't have the left and right. This is our new menu. We determined that our center channel is output number three. So we change it to output. There's two numbers here. Obviously it's all output two, but it's one, two, three. Click on start. What it's gonna do is output the sound to the center channel only, and that's what our U-mic is gonna pick up on. So at this point, I believe we are ready to take our first measurement for our center channel. And if you want to click on check levels, it plays some sound, should be out of the center channel um, and your subwoofer system. So you can go through that and make sure that that's all working. Um, but then you just do start, let it go through, and you'll get your measurement at 60. Again, making sure that your receiver was set to the 60 hertz crossover for your center channel, since that's what we're measuring. Once that's done, you simply go to your next setting which on mine it's 80, go back into your AVR, change the center speaker crossover to 80, do the same thing. Start, it'll go through, it'll take a measurement, go to your next one, change your AVR to 90 for the center speaker. Same thing for 100, 110, 120. So when you're all done, since I've already done this, here's my center crossovers, and then you just start comparing them. So there is my 60 and 80. So you can see the difference just between 60 and 80. 80 clearly has a higher output by a couple decibels, gets rid of this little null right here. So 80 in this case is a better crossover. We'll get rid of, well, we'll just leave 60. 90, a little higher yet, 100, 110, and 120. So since we have a lot of stuff going on here, we know that 80 was better, so we'll get rid of 60. We'll compare 80 to 90. Pretty much the same down in this area, but some better output up here, so I like 90 better. 100, still gaining some output throughout, so I like 100 better than 90. We'll compare it with 110. Kind of starting to flatten out this null a little bit down here at 130 hertz. And it's still some better output right, right in this range. So we'll keep 110 and compare that to our last one at 120. Also 120, still looking a little bit better to me. So to match my left and right mains, 120 is what I selected for my crossover for my center channel as well. Once you've got that done, you're gonna do the exact same thing with your rears. And that is individual speakers, left and right. However, on my Denon receiver, I can't change my crossover for my rear surrounds individually from the left to the right side. They're both on the same crossover. And I'm using the same speakers for all five, so it doesn't surprise me that so far my mains, my left, center, and right, are all crossed over at 120 since they're the exact same speaker and exposed to the exact same room dimensions and effect that the room has on them. Let's see what happens with the rear. 
So you can start with either one, you know, rear, left, surround, or however you want to recognize what it is. And then going back to our chart, surround left is channel 5. So then you just simply change your output to 5. Go into your AVR, make sure that surround crossover setting is at 60. Take a measurement, change it to 80. Go back into your AVR, change it to 80 for the rear surround. Take a measurement, 90, 100, 110, 120. And you've got your left surround all measured out. And then it's going to be the same process for the right. Label it however you want. Right surround, start at the bottom, 60, go into your AVR, change the... Maybe your AVR does have separate crossovers for your left and right surrounds. Mine only had them together as the rear surrounds. But then channel six on your output is right surround. So take your measurements for that rear channel as well, 60, 80. Make sure you change it in your AVR each time that you're gonna take a new measurement so you get accurate results. So here's my results of my surround crossovers. Okay, so to go over our measurements for our left and right surround channels, started with the left at 60 and comparing it to 80. 80 clearly has some better output. So compare that to 90. Still a little bit better. This null at 116 gets worse. But let's keep going and see what we think. 100, still improving on this a little bit. And now we're starting to see a little bit of a less null there in that dip. 110, even better kind of flattening out through this range as well. And then 120. So 120 has a little bit more. However, 120 being the blue is right here at 120, which is the crossover setting. I don't believe I'd want to set my crossover in this null. It doesn't have a whole lot more output than 110. And if we change it to 110, then our crossover is going to be right up here instead of down in this null. So to me, it would make sense to my left surround to be crossed at 110 right up in this point versus way down here at 120. So we'll go with 110 for the left surround. Let's see what our right surround looks like. We got 60 and 80. 80 is clearly the winner there. To 90, better than 80. Let's compare it to 100. Also a little bit better than 90. So here's 110, which was the winner on our left side. So 110, a little bit better outcome, drops down a little bit more at the 120 range, kind of similar to the, the left surround. And so 110, here's our crossover point at 110. So it's kind of in line with this curve, kind of right in the middle of those two nulls. But let's look at 120 and see what it does. So 120, again, would put our crossover right here, way down here at the bottom. I could be wrong, and if anyone knows better than me, I'm assuming you don't want to put your crossovers in the middle of that null, which would be way down here at 55 for a decibel level versus our 110 would be up here at 75 decibels. So I'm going to go with 110 for my rear crossovers on my surrounds. So there's the two left and right surround channels. So they're very similar. I got a little bit more of a dip here on the right surround, but their 110, which is right here at the cursor, is kind of right in line with the peak. So I believe 110 is the best setting for my surrounds. And compare that with the 80. So your crossover point would be here, but we have a lot less outcome at 80 compared to the 110. And if we're comparing those, I'll go back to the mains. So my mains were crossed at 110. So there's 110. And the mains at 80 were right there. So pretty close. Not a whole lot of difference when it comes to the left and right mains. The 80 crossover is the lower line here. It's kind of purple on my screen, whereas the blue line is the, the 110 crossover. And if we compare our center... This one ended up being 120, and compare that to 80. So again, noticeable difference on that one. A little bit smoother, a little bit more, more output. 
So that was the procedure I went with. If there's any questions or comments or suggestions, I'm open to them. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if I did it all wrong or if you have a better idea of how to do this. This is the settings I went with. I'm very happy with the way it sounds. No complaints. Everything just sounds absolutely amazing at this point, and I haven't even treated the room acoustically, which should be coming up down the road here with some posters and some different ideas that I have for some room treatments. And then we'll be doing this all over again. So that'll be something else we can compare to each other from a non-treated room to a treated area. And I'm not going to be able to treat a whole lot as I don't have side walls as this is an open basement area, as you know. It'll still be interesting to see what they do as far as minimizing some reflections and how much that might change our sub response and our mains and all that good stuff. Please like and subscribe this video. Like I said, comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for me. I'm open to it and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.